pads. Obviously, we've got Atlanta sitting out there right now. She rolled out this morning. She's been on the pad maybe two hours now. Should fly on June the 8th, about 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m. Everything on this side of the river is Cape Canaveral. It's controlled by the Air Force. And the major contract is Boeing, Lockheed. These, these launches, these are all unmanned launches. In the old days, we did have manned launches from Cape Canaveral. Jim and I had Mercury programs like John Glenn and Alan Shepard. That ended about 1970. Everything since then is basically either military payloads or your big communication satellites for your satellite TV. That's the thing. They all come from here. Um, that pad right there is called 37. The, the white one with the two towers on either side. That's the new. That's the first new pad in 35 years built out here. It's been there about five years. We launched a rocket called Delta IV. It's a big heavy lift booster, and all it does is carry big communication satellites. Um, there is a, a rocket, I mean, a probe called a Mars Reconnaissance Observer. I think it's going to go from there uh, in a couple of months. All these big, kind of gray, imposing looking buildings, they were built back in the uh, kind of the Cold War days for ICBM testing, and we launched a lot of reconnaissance satellites from there. Those are where the, build, the rockets are actually stacked together and assembled, and they're rolled out using a rail car like a locomotive. We'll tow the rockets out to the launch pad. Now in between, you see that big building with the four doors, big heavy slatted doors. On the left of it, past the yellow lower building, you see a launch pad way off in the distance. It looks like a gantry with a bunch of towers. That's pad 40. Now that's been inactive for many years, but they're... That was a pretty good size one. They get a lot bigger than that. Now, we'll, again, we'll be stopping back by this building to take pictures a little later on in the tour. And we'll wait till we get around these buildings and we'll uh, talk about it some more. Now, we had a, on the side of the building and to see, it looks like missing panels. Well, that's what happened, that gray section up there. We lost about a thousand panels off this building during the hurricanes. Uh, this, the center itself had about a hundred million dollars of damage. So, uh, we're still putting things back together. You can see a couple of guys working off a of scaffolding there. It kind of gives you a scale of the building. Now, directly underneath where they're working, you see a big gray door. We open that door up. We, we bring the external tank in through that door. It comes in by barge. It's towed in there, and then we stack it up. We use a crane to lift it up and put it onto the shuttle uh, stack. So we're doing quite a bit of extensive work. It's just been repainted. The flag's just been repainted. It's going to look pretty nice here in another couple of months. Now, if you look to your right, you're going to see an American flag, half mast, flapping in the breeze there. Just below it, there's a blue rectangle on it. Can everybody see that? Yeah. That's the official countdown clock that you see on TV. And they show the press, and that's where the, the press usually goes, is over there in that parking area. And that's what you see on TV, actually, in some movies and so forth. And you see these doors here, those open doors. The one on the left this morning is where the shuttle, at about 4 a.m., they open those doors and roll the shuttle out to the pad from inside there. Now, if you look to your left, you see all this gravel and rock. This is called the crawler way. You know, that's about eight, it's basically the, the width of an eight lane highway. And that's where we roll the crawler out with the shuttle on top of it. It weighs about 18 million pounds, the whole thing, to go out to the pad. I think they got out there in about six hours this morning, which is, that's pretty good time. As the video said, it would take about eight hours sometimes. We roll on up to pad A, and we'll show you a little video about how that process is done and what the crawler's all about. It is, um, it's sort of infamous for, is the, the very first shuttle launch that left from pad B was the Challenger in 1986. And we lost her 73 seconds after we launched. It was a very cold morning, if you remember. We had icicles on the pad. The O-rings failed, and uh, Challenger, uh, she didn't actually explode, but she came apart over the ocean, and it shut us down for almost three years. Uh, but we've also launched the Hubble Space Telescope from this pad. We've launched uh, Galileo, a mission to Jupiter from here, the Magellan mission to Mars. John Glenn was launched from here, so it's, uh, it's got quite a bit of history itself. And um, when we go back to the moon on that rocket I showed you, the Ares 1, uh, the man missions to the moon will go from that pad.
So the next time we go to the moon, it's going to be off of this launch pad 39B. It's going to be torn down in about a year and a half. That all that structure is going to come down to bare concrete. And we're going to put up four 600-foot tall lightning towers, and it's going to be configured for the new rocket. So you're getting to see it while it still exists as it is now. Uh, it won't look that way in a few years. Now as we come up on this pad, you'll notice the very top, it's got a white tower right there. That's actually our lightning tower. It distributes, lightning hits that and distributes the power down to the ground. So everything is protected that's actually up on the pad. Uh, that tower is just a little bit shorter than uh, Alan Shepard's uh, Redstone rocket that launched back in 1963, the first American in space. Now, if, if you look halfway up that tower, the right side of the tower, look about halfway, a little more than halfway up, you're going to see a little white box up there. Can everybody see that? A little white box and there's a big steel arm that sticks straight out into space. That white box is the orbiter access arm. That's the little box, the white room that you see on TV where the astronauts actually climb into the shuttle. The shuttle's there, they'll swing that over to the hatch, and that's where they access it. Now let me... One thing I want to say about these fences here, you're going to notice these fences are curved outward. One of the reasons we do that, obviously there's security issues here, but it also keeps alligators from climbing over the fence. Believe it or not, they can climb over a chain link fence straight over. They've got videos of them doing that, so they replace the fences with these curved ones. Pretty amazing. Now, if you see this water tower here, just to the right of the pad, the reason that's there is there's about 400,000 gallons of water on launch day in that tower in the piping on the ground. And what we do is we flood that launch pad, the launch platform, with water just before we light the main engines of the boosters. And the reason we do that is not so much to keep them cool, it's to keep the shock wave. The sound waves would destroy the air tonight. Half of that pad actually rotates. And it'll close around that shuttle, just like closing a book. And then you won't be able to see anything but the very top of the external tank and the back side of it. And if you notice, it's sitting on top of the mobile launcher platform. It's like a big square battleship. We'll get another view of one as we go back out towards the runway. That whole assembly is picked up by that crawler and brought out here. And we got a little gator here at the pond to the right. Now there are a couple out this morning or this afternoon. Now that tank, if you might have remembered if you were read about it, that shuttle was out at the pad earlier this year. It was going to launch in March.